All right, I enjoyed this recent report from CNN. Uh, they went to investigate the shoplifting epidemic in San Francisco, and let's watch what happened during this investigation. Richie Greenberg walked into a San Francisco Walgreens when he saw in the frozen food section this. Chains, heavy chains that went from padlock to padlock on both sides of the doors. And this was bizarre, something I'd never seen before. This is just more icing on the cake telling us that rampant crime is is has become a, a regular part of life. So typical that in the 30 minutes we were at this Walgreens, <laughs> we watched three people, including this man, steal. Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? He didn't pay. Walgreens says this Richmond neighborhood store with aisles of products like mustard locked behind plexiglass has the highest theft rate of all their nearly 9,000 U.S. stores, hit more than a dozen times a day. When thieves turned to cleaning out ice cream and frozen burritos, workers grew so frustrated they resorted to the chains. They were ordered down by corporate because of the negative messaging. But Walgreens isn't the only retailer impacted in San Francisco. You have to ask an employee for help. At this store, frozen food is controlled with a cable lock. Fake eyelashes locked behind plexiglass, along with lotion and nail polish. At another grocery store, $14 bags of coffee under lock and key. What is this? Um, I don't know. I don't understand why coffee. I don't oh, know. here she is. But oh. <laughs> it's become kind of like a police state in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Police state, sure. It's a police state where people casually stroll into a convenience store and leave with a handful of merchandise without any fear of any sort of prosecution. That's a police state? No, that's that's the exact opposite of police. What you are seeing is the exact opposite of a police state. Companies don't companies don't lock up their bags of coffee behind padlocks in a police state. That happens in a state with no police. So it is, again, very much the opposite problem that you're experiencing in San Francisco. But as always, you know, it's, it's very revealing to look at the kinds of merchandise that places like Walgreens and other stores have to put behind lock and key. It's um, expensive bags of coffee, uh, ice cream, frozen burritos, fake eyelashes, nail polish, lotion, pancake syrup. Now, What's the significance of that? Well, these are not the items that you grab if you are starving and malnourished. Which means that poverty is not driving this problem. Somebody who's poor and desperate and needs to steal to survive isn't going to steal Pete's coffee or a carton of cookie dough ice cream. I've been broke. Okay, I was broke for several years. I didn't steal gourmet coffee bags or cartons of ice cream. I just didn't buy them. That's what you do when you're broke. You just don't buy that stuff. I went through years of my life where I never went to the grocery store and bought dessert or expensive coffee. Couldn't afford it. I was surviving. I was, I was fine. I wasn't going to die. But, uh, but I just couldn't afford that kind of stuff. So I didn't buy it. And it was okay. So what you're seeing here is not poverty. Uh, being poor alone doesn't cause you to do that. It just doesn't. What causes this is when you are totally indifferent. So what we're seeing in San Francisco, along with a lot of other things, is total indifference. It is a form of despair, but, but it's not despair brought on by financial desperation. It's the despair of simply not caring about anything, having no moral compass, just doing whatever you want because you want to. That's the despair gripping hold of San Francisco and many places in America, and it's uh, encouraged and facilitated by the government, which is not enforcing the law. You know a company is looking out for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it. This is great news for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and includes a mobile hotspot with no price increases whatsoever. If you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't uh, made the switch yet, take a look again. For just $20 a month, you'll get unlimited talk, text, and now 50% more 5G data plus their new mobile hotspot. This is why I love Pure Talk. They're veteran-owned and only hire the best customer service team located right here in the great USA. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Remember, 
You vote with how you spend your money, so stop supporting woke wireless companies that don't support you. When you go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, you'll save an additional 50% off the first month because they actually value you. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh. Pure Talk, wireless for Americans by Americans. If you love venturing into the great outdoors, you you know that uh, staying connected is essential for safety and peace of mind. That's where Satellite Phone Store comes in. Their devices help you stay in touch with friends, family, and emergency services, even when you're far from cellular coverage. Satellite Phone Store's Bivy Stick and Satellite Communicator use satellite networks for phone calls, text messages, GPS navigation, and uh, an SOS feature for emergency situations. If you're not sure which device is right for you, think about uh, where you'll be using the device and what features are most important to you, and you can figure it out from there. If you need a lightweight compact option for backpacking, a bivy stick might be the better choice. However, if you want uh, a more robust device with additional features like weather forecasts and two-way messaging, a satellite communicator could be the better option for you. Something that brings uh, me peace of mind is knowing that even in a global disaster, satellite phones will keep me and my beloved ones always connected. For a limited time, Satellite Phone Store has a special promotional offer. When you go to uh, sat123.com slash Walsh, you'll get a free bivy stick or a free uh, Inmarsat satellite phone included with an applicable annual agreement. Head over to sat123.com slash Walsh. That's sat123.com slash Walsh and get your device today. You, you know what? Someone who's stealing ice cream from Walgreens, you know what they need? What they need most of all? They need a consequence. Okay? They need consequences. In fact, everybody needs consequences. This is a basic human need. When you live a life free of consequence, it, it's, it breeds despair. Because without consequence, you don't have direction. You don't have meaning. And you end up with San Francisco, a wasteland where people are just wandering around like zombies. And it's disgusting and gross and depressing and ugly. That's what you end up with. And that's the other thing, too. Ugliness, Okay. Here's what we have to understand. Ugliness will always be a part of life uh, in this fallen world that we live in. There will always be ugliness. And we as a society have to choose what kind of ugliness we want. Each society chooses its form of ugliness. It's kind of like in Ghostbusters when they had to choose the form of their destructor and they chose the marshmallow man. Well, each society must choose its ugliness. So people don't like um, especially these days, we don't like prisons. We don't like uh, police arresting people. That's ugly. It's an ugly thing. It is. Prisons are ugly places. They're not. They are. They're not beautiful. It's not a beautiful. It's not beautiful to be in a prison. It's an ugly place. It looks ugly. Ugly things are happening. The whole thing is ugly. The fact that people need to go to prison is ugly. It's all. It's all very ugly. Um, arresting someone. It's, it's. It's a very ugly thing, and it and it can get even uglier. A police try to arrest them if they're just arresting someone for stealing ice cream. And if the person resists, then the police have to use force. Because if they don't use force, then there's no point of even having the cops in the first place. I mean, if someone can resist arrest and the cops have to go, well, okay, if you don't want to be arrested, never mind. Then that's just the same thing as not having cops in the first place. So if you're going to have the law, then you need to have law enforcement. And if you're going to have law enforcement, it means it, means it, has to, it, 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 requires, a, it requires force, violence. And so they're arresting someone for something petty, and the person resists, and so now they have to use force, and that person uses force also, and sometimes uh, that person ends up dead. We've seen that many times. George Floyd starts with, uh, with a $20 counterfeit bill, and what we often hear from the left is, is it, is it worth you know, police are going to kill someone over a, a $20 bill, going to kill someone over shoplifting? Is it worth that? Well, the answer is yes. I mean, it is. Now, the way you're phrasing that is is not totally honest. It's not like the cops just showed up and shot someone dead because they were using counterfeit money or because they stole something. So they weren't killed for that. But they were killed in the process of enforcing the laws against that. And it's a very ugly thing. It is. But the point is that if you don't want that ugliness, if you say, it's too ugly, I don't want it. It's enforcing a law. It's a very ugly thing. I don't want it. I don't, we don't want it in society. It makes my tummy hurt to look at it. Don't want it. it makes me feel uncomfortable. Having all these people in, in jails. We hear the left complain about uh, They give us the stats on all the people in jail. Oh, it makes me feel like all those people in jail. That's not right. I, I feel bad about that. That's mean. Well, Okay. So we're not going to have that ugliness anymore, the ugliness of enforcing the law and punishing people and consequence and that sort of thing. 
But you don't escape the ugliness. Then what happens is that the ugliness is elsewhere. In, in this case, it's everywhere. So if you don't want to contain the ugliness, you're going to end up with it everywhere. Everything becomes ugly. In San Francisco, they do not have the ugliness of enforcing laws, arresting people, carting them off to jail. They don't have that. And so in exchange, everything is ugly. In exchange, they have... Uh, you know, bags of coffee behind padlocks in the in the in the convenience store. Okay, in exchange, if you want to go buy a grocery item, you have to you have to be escorted to the aisle by an employee who takes out a big uh, a big key ring and unlocks it and hands it to you. That's what you get in exchange for not having the ugliness of law enforcement. Um, I prefer the other option. You know, where, where we, at least then the ugly things are contained. And if you are going to have to face that kind of ugly thing, it's because you chose to. You know, you chose to steal, and now you've put yourself in a very ugly situation, which means you're gonna, you're gonna, the cops are going to come, you're going to go to jail, it's gonna, not going to be good for you. Really ugly situation, but you chose it. You chose it. As opposed to now, if you don't have law enforcement, you don't have consequence, then everyone has to deal with the ugliness, whether they chose it or not. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.